Claire. Let's all take a moment to remember what it feels like to start a new job. You're really excited, and maybe you're a tiny bit nervous, but you have the skills and experiences for your role, and there's plenty to learn and so many new people to meet. Now, consider your switching roles at the same time. It's definitely scary. Today, I would like to share with you my transition uh, from site or from software engineering in a, the biomedical research field to a site reliability engineer for the world's number one job site. I'll tell you why I wanted to make this change and how Indeed supported this career move. I'll also share with you the immersive onboarding experience provided by Indeed, which eased my transition into a new role at a new company and enabled me to contribute value early and often. Hopefully, you'll leave here today with a better understanding of the role of site reliability at engineering at Indeed and why you might want to make this change as well. So why did I want to transition from software engineering to site reliability engineering? Before Indeed, I was a full stack software engineer at a biomedical research company where I developed open source applications for automating the collection of and analysis of data. I participated in code reviews, triaged issues, designed and implemented feature requests, and planned and engineered releases. I learned a lot about the software development lifecycle, but my solutions were pretty limited to developing uh, for local environments such as a user's workstation or a single centralized server. So when I began to think about my next role, I realized that I wanted to diversify my skill set and learn how to develop and manage reliable internet scale systems. So I flew across the country to begin my new life as a site reliability engineer at Indeed. Now, I'd experienced switching jobs before, but I'd never experienced changing roles. This added some additional overhead to my onboarding because I needed to learn how to become an SRE and I also needed to understand how to onboard as an SRE at Indeed. I had a fairly nebulous concept of the role, but that was about to change thanks to an immersive onboarding experience that helped me develop my understanding of the role and the, as well as the skills to succeed. I learned that SRE is always on call for the products uh, that Indeed offers to keep them available and running quickly. As a software engineer with really limited experience operating systems and production, this idea was really terrifying, and it was so easy to imagine the worst. One of my coworkers had developed an onboarding for on-call pilot program, which um, gave me structured, outcome-driven training with experienced SREs so that I could learn the skills and the systems for effective incident response. This training introduced and grouped common recurring concepts through modules, which would be mentored by experienced SREs on my team back in Seattle. These mentors would work with me to highlight important documentation, tell me stories of their own experiences on incident response, um, highlight any gotchas, and answer my questions that came up along the way. The modules themselves were composed of skill sets which would need to be demonstrated in order to complete each module. Demonstrating the skills uh, gave me the hands-on experience with Indeed systems and tools for effective in incident response before applying them to actual investigations. These modules and their associated skills checklists were encapsulated within JIRA tickets, which allowed us to visually track and monitor my progress through onboarding, and also assess my readiness for on-call. This helped answer questions that I had, like how much progress have I made, and when have I learned enough to go on-call? As a bonus, like everyone loves that sense of accomplishment that comes from hitting uh, all those tickets in the done column. This method of onboarding was hugely successful for me for a number of reasons. Working with my new teammates in the first few weeks helped build rapport and foster a sense of belonging in a new office. Skills checklists allowed flexibility to teach and to learn in the styles which suited us best. And relating common concepts through modules provided a structure for onboarding, which allowed me to focus on learning and worry less about what to learn. Finally, demonstrating skills and outcomes created confidence in my knowledge and ability to apply it to real life situations. 
It was extremely rewarding to be added to the on-call rotation at the end of this program. After all, that was the whole goal. Working with mentors to resolve incoming pages and applying the skills I learned during, during onboarding allowed me to have the successes that I need to feel like I could do this myself. As it turns out, being on call is a lot less terrifying when you have a box of tools at your disposal and mentors to guide you. While I was learning the skills that I needed to be effective at on-call, I was also learning many of the other skills required for SRE, including how to be a software engineer at Indeed. Onboarding as a software engineer taught me that site reliability engineers also um, engineer uh, improvements to product reliability. This onboarding also allowed me to learn how to contribute uh, valuable changes with observable impact and while continuing to develop skills that I could apply throughout my job after onboarding. I learned that site reliability engineers are really just software engineers. We do many of the same things that software engineers do, uh, from improving source code by contributing code changes, participating in code reviews and design reviews. We attend daily stand-ups and backlog triage meetings. My first task as onboarding for software engineering was to implement a ch network check from one of Indeed's services to another. The change itself was very small, maybe a handful of lines of, of code borrowed from other places. Um, but it was exciting because here I was in my first few weeks adding value to the team by providing visibility into the health of their service and also learning how to monitor these connections. From there, I dove deeper into the team's stack by investigating latency around an endpoint that they wanted to, to roll out. This involved learning how to implement and report fine-grained timing metrics around various um, components, and then using those metrics to identify those components with high latency and advise changes on how to improve. At the end of this work, I was able to use those metrics, identify the components with high latency, and once those teams make changes, they will be able to use the metrics that I implemented to quantify their improvement. In whole, onboarding as a software engineer allowed me to learn how software is developed at Indeed, which in turn enables me to contribute to any project. Hands-on experience learning a team's technical stack taught me how applications are built in Indeed and how data flows between Indeed services and data stores. Additionally, focused project work aligned my onboarding with SRE's broader goals of visibility and reliability. But most importantly, being a contributor and making valuable changes early and often gave me a sense of purpose through onboarding. The last step in my journey was to onboard as a site reliability engineer at Indeed. In this final phase, I would learn SRE-specific skills and apply the learning that I had gained from prior onboarding. This helped complete my understanding of the role of SRE at Indeed. So I flew to San Francisco to join my teammates located in the office there. This was a really great opportunity to meet the coworkers that I didn't always have the chance to see in person every single day. I worked with one experienced SRE to investigate performance issues with a, with a product I was beginning to take responsibility for. This helped reinforce what I had learned through the onboarding for on-call pilot program, and it was helpful to leverage a knowledgeable nearby coworker to help guide the investigation, answer my questions, and model interactions with the engineering team. Additionally, I learned how to support a San Francisco-based engineering team as an SRE. And this looked pretty similar to my onboarding as a software engineer. I implemented new metrics and new monitors for their applications and even got to um, learn how to do a little bit of chaos testing. Um, it was really exciting to be able to transfer my knowledge from onboarding as a software engineer back in Seattle to an entirely different team while continuing to pick up new skills along the way. Putting it all together, Onboarding as a software engineer helped me understand the practices of engineering at Indeed and taught me how to be a contributor. Onboarding as a site reliability engineer helped me understand SRE's broader goals of visibility and reliability and how to contribute changes uh, that furthered those goals. 
I learned that software engineering and site reliability engineering really aren't that different from each other. Our daily goals and responsibilities might not look the same, but we each use software engineering in order to implement solutions. I've been in SRE at Indeed for three months. I've learned a lot, and I know I still have plenty to learn, but I have this really strong foundation brought upon by this set of onboarding experiences, and I also have a supportive company culture and coworkers who enable and further my continued development. With that, I'm confident I can take on any challenge that comes next. Thank you.